everybody, it's Aveline here with the Harvey and the Hag, and we are getting ready for our next class coming up, which is Tuesday, April 14th. It is scheduled from 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time to probably at least 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. <laughs> and there's Lothar! <laughs> He's getting ready to make dinner, but I wanted to give you this quick um, primer for the class. Now, if you're going to attend the class, you do not necessarily need to have any supplies. You can certainly attend the class itself. We will give you a lot of information about um, about the process of stamping your fabric itself. And if you're interested, we do have two other classes which we will link below so that you can go back and watch those two classes. The first class is a history of block printing, a very brief history. There's much more to come in future classes. Um, as well as us going over the entire list of supplies that you're going to want to have on hand. Uh, that second class was actually about carving your own block. So hopefully, if you guys have been following along in our tutorials and our classes, you have either begun or started planning at least your block to carve, um, or you purchased it and hopefully it's on its way. Um, we are working on a couple of new blocks ourselves. We are also getting some blocks that are going to be 3D printed. We're going to have blocks that are acrylic instead of wood. And we're also going to get a test of a CNC routed wood to compare to a linoleum um, of the same design. So we can kind of do some fun experimentations about what works better. And we'll be playing with that over the, a few days leading up to the class itself. We'll share our findings, share what we're learning. Because up until this point, we have pretty much exclusively worked with just wooden or just linoleum um, mounted blocks themselves. And they're either car ones that we have carved ourselves or they're ones that are um, laser engraved by a fantastic vendor. They are Catman Do Designs on Etsy. Uh, we'll link them below as well if you're interested in them. But hopefully you, if you've been following along, you have some kind of plan in place for your, for your block. Now, if you missed our first two classes or if you're like, oh, I, I want to, but I haven't, I haven't even started my design yet, it's not too late. You still have over a week until our next class. And honestly, it should only take you six to ten hours of some casual time of carving to produce a fairly simplistic thing. Don't overdo it. Just kind of learn to work with the medium and get something that you can kind of practice and play with on your fabric. Uh, so when our Tuesday, April 14th class comes around, if you want to go ahead and have your block ready and your area set up, which we will show you here in just a minute, great. You can actually block along with us and you can uh, message us during our live stream and say, hey, I'm having this problem. What am I doing wrong? Or mm, doesn't exactly look like what you've got. What should we be doing differently? And we can kind of try to address that in the class. Also for that class, we will have a handout which will have some of um, my biggest mistakes and what I realized I was doing wrong. So basically like a troubleshooting guide. If you're seeing this, then you're probably doing this wrong. Um, so right here, I'm going to scooch back a little bit and hopefully we'll zoom you in. Haha, -ha, see my hand. So this is the setup of everything that you're going to need in order to um, actually go ahead and stamp your fabric. We are actually missing two things on our list of suggested supplies. Um, and, um, I just wanted to kind of show you what our setup looks like. So right here, you can see, we actually have our underlayment and at the moment we have, I think three layers, which is about, um, I'm really close to the camera. Sorry. So three layers is about the biggest that you're going to want to do or the, the deepest, cushiest you're going to want to do with your, um, setup. So we have three layers set up here. Of course, we have the fabric that we're gonna initially be stamping on, and not for the class. I'm actually just gonna get to do some block printing right now. Um, we have our blocks. You can see over here, we've got several blocks that are set up, and this is one of the blocks that we've talked about in one of our past classes. So this is from the Menelagine of Basil. We have our pigment over here. We're gonna be working with house paint, and this is just a great little thing to have. It's called a paint key. They're usually less than a dollar. I don't think that's, that it's on the Amazon list, um, but I would highly recommend that you get it anyways. And we have our tape and a tape gun so that we can actually tape our fabric down onto the underlayment, which I highly recommend because that will help keep your fabric more taut and will produce a more crisp design. Um, and then we of course have paint refills because we go through a lot of this. Additionally, this is not a requirement, but you definitely want to consider doing a mallet. That will help you to sort of 
um, reduce the amount of backbreaking work that you are doing if you're using the stamp pad method. Actually, if you're using stamp pad or brayer method, either one. Uh, we have two of them here. I tend to use the white one because it doesn't leave as many mars or marks on the back of my blocks. But that's really not the end of the world either if it should mark on the back of your block. Then you're going to want some kind of flat, completely flat lip pan. And right here you can see that we have three different things. We talked about this in our last class. If you're doing a very small block, then you can certainly use like a paper plate. And then you're going to want craft felt because that's what you're, you're going to need for your stamp pad. We also have this um, wonderful little flat lift pan that I actually got at a secondhand store. I don't know, it was some kind of serving tray, but it's flat and that is the most important part. And then this was actually a food storage bin that has a lid. Um, and this is fantastic. It's huge. It's for some of our bigger blocks. So if you're going to do a smaller project, you don't want a big, big pan like this. You end up losing a lot of your pigment and you get more waste than you want. So you don't want to go the exact size of your block either because you need a little bit of room to kind of wiggle and move around um, if you're going to be using the stamp pad method. If you're going to be using the brayer method, you're going to need a brayer. Now, this is one of the supplies that we have coming. This is not the type of brayer that you will want for your class. You will actually want a rubber brayer. You do not want a sponge or other brayer that is used for like painting walls and surfaces because this is going to be way too squishy when you're rubbing on, but this is just to give you an idea of how much surface space you're going to need. You're going to want to get a two, four, or six inch brayer, my recommendation, based on the size of your block. We, most of our blocks are about six inches, so we'll do like a six inch brayer. And then you're going to want your lipped pan to be at least big enough for you to be able to kind of do this back and forth so that you can get enough of your pigment onto your brayer in order to then take it and transfer it onto your block like so, okay? So we are actually awaiting our shipment for a, a rubber brayer, which we have not played with recently. I did it actually when I first started and I didn't like it, but I wanna experiment with it for you guys a little bit more. And then we don't have any painter's tape, which I also recommend if you don't want to do your lines with chalk. And this is a wonderful chalk marker. It's from Dritz. The whole package itself, I believe is uh, somewhere between 11 and $13 on Amazon, and you also get some wonderful refills, like... So, all of these colors in this little box come with this for like 11 to 13 bucks, something like that, and it's a fantastic investment. That will basically help you do your lines so that you can do your registration, and of course you'll need some kind of yardstick or meter stick. You can do a, a wooden one like you can see right here, um, or I generally work more so with a metal one because the lines end up being a little bit straighter. So, just to go over, you don't need to have the supplies in order to attend our class on Tuesday, April 14th at 7 p.m. However, if you want to get going or if you're like, okay, what are the next steps? The absolute minimum that you're going to need, you'll need your pigment, which is either going to be a paint, an ink, or a dye. I recommend the first two. You're going to need your fabric itself, of course, cotton, linen, you can do wool. I don't recommend starting with that or silk. Um, you're going to need your pan and craft felt. Or if you're not doing the stamp pad method, instead of the craft felt, you will need the brayer, a rubber brayer. And then, of course, you need the underlayment itself. If you're not able to find underlayment that you can get shipped to you right now, or if it's just too expensive for you, you can do layers and layers and layers of craft felt. And then some people I know will either lay like um, newspaper over top of it or even take the cling wrap or plastic wrap to put over it so that it's not soaking into all of your layers. You can do it that way. I will tell you that is not going to give you the same bounce or spring. Um, and so I know it is a little bit pricey. Find a friend. Um, I would invest in the underlayment. I really think that that is going to help you quite a bit in the class. Then the um, optionals that I think are really kind of necessary is your yardstick, your chalk, your mallet, painter's tape if you want to. The only reason I use painter's tape or would use painter's tape instead of the chalk itself is if for some reason I'm worried about the chalk residue staying on a fabric, which I've only ever had a problem with one fabric and it was a silk. And it was because it was complicated. I don't think it's going to apply to you. But if for some reason you don't want to use chalk, you just don't want it on there, you don't want to have to worry about wet wiping or, or 
buffing the chalk out of your um, product itself, then you can use the painter's tape to basically go along the bottom, like, sorry, my head's out of here, but so you would use the painter's tape to go along the bottom of where you want your block to go, as opposed to most of the time I'm drawing my chalk lines to the middle of where I want my block to land so that I can orient it appropriately. So we will put all the appropriate links down, down below. Hopefully you will join us for the class, even if you aren't prepared to be uh, block printing the same night as us or the next day as us and you're still very interested we welcome you to those classes if you have any questions please let us know and we thank you very much for visiting us